Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert Sports Show. I'm your host, Robert. All right, one thing I want to start trying to do a little bit more of is some driver spotlights. We're going to spotlight some of the drivers in the NASCAR Cup Series, Xfinity, and Truck Series. And these spotlights are going to be non-champions. So anybody that's won a championship, I will do a champion spotlight when the season is over with of all the champions in the Truck Series, Xfinity, and Cup. So the first driver uh, spotlight is going to be William Darrell Wallace Jr. Bubba Wallace. Born October 8th, 1993. He started racing at the age of nine, racing Bandoleros and Legend Cars. In 2005, he won 35 of 48 Bandolero races. From 2007 to, through 2009, he was in the Euro Stars Late Model Series. In those three seasons, he had 29, He started 29 of the 48 races, one win, eight top fives, 12 top tens. In 2010, he joined the NASCAR Drive for the Diversity Program. He began racing for Rev Racing in the k and East Series. He won his very first k and East race at Greenville, South Carolina. In 2010, he finished third in points. 2011, he finished second in points. And in 2012, he finished seventh. His time in the k and East Series, 36 starts, 6 wins, 16 top fives, 25 top tens, and 4 poles. In 2013, he moved up to the through the Toyota Development Drive for Diversity Program, drove for Kyle Busch Motorsports in the, in the Truck Series. He won his 19th ever truck start. In his two full seasons with KBM 2013 and 2014, 44 races, 5 wins, 14 top fives, 26 top tens, 3 poles, 8th and 3rd in points. In 2015, he left the Toyota Development Program, Drive to Diversity Program, and moved over to Roush Race, Roush, uh, Fenway Racing in the Xfinity Series. Um, he made six Xfinity starts for JGR when he was part of the Toyota Development Program from 2012 through 2014, had four top tens. 2015, full-time in Xfinity with Roush Racing, 2015 and 2016. In those two seasons, he had six top fives, 25 top tens, one pole, finished seventh and 11th in standings. In 2017, he was on his way to an amazing season. He was fourth in points after 13 races. Unfortunately, lost a sponsor. My sponsor pulled out of the sport. Obviously, it's hard to run a team to that level without a sponsor. So Roush ended up shutting down the number six car, the Xfinity program. Without a ride, he ended up getting a few cup races in the fame number 43 for an injured Eric Amarola. He ran four races for them, and then in 2018, Eric Amarola moved over to Stuart Haas Racing. Bubba Wallace took over the number 43 for Richard Petty Motorsports. He drove that 43 2018 through 2020. Um, during that 2020 season, um, rumors started coming out that um, Denny Hamlin and Michael Jordan were going to invest in, in uh, Richard Petty Motorsports with Bubba Wallace and Bubba was still be the driver of the 43. Um, Denny's talked about this before on different shows on the podcast, I think it was, and maybe on one of the interviews, that he called Michael Jordan because they're friends. They've been friends for a long time and asked Michael if he heard the rumor. Michael hadn't, and he shared the rumor with him, and one thing led to another. They're like, why don't we team up? Why don't we build our own team? And that's how 2311 got built. Um, and then they announced late in 2020 that in 2021, 2311, Michael Jordan, Danny Hamlin, Bubba Wallace is the driver. Um, also in 2020, we all know what happened at Talladega. Um, 63 garage stalls at Talladega. Uno broke tight like that. The fact that, yes, the video evidence came out later that it had happened sometime in 2019. So the spring race in 2020, somebody was in that garage stall and didn't notice it, didn't see it, didn't think two things about it. Um, unfortunately, the fall, he team, one of the members of the team, not by himself, but was not even in the garage, saw it, reported it to NASCAR, things happened. NASCAR informed by the walls of it. We all know the fallout from that. We still have fallout from that, unfortunately. Bubba did nothing wrong because we all know there is a divide in this country, period. And that needs to end. Um, during his time driving the number 43 for Richard Petty Motorsports, he had 108 starts, 
three top fives and nine top tens. 2021, moving on to 23-11 racing, a one-car team. Yes, they had a technical alliance with Joe Gibbs Racing, but it was still 23-11. In that first season, 36 starts, got that win at Talladega, the rain shortened race. Three top fives, three top tens, ended at 21st in points. Rain shorting races are exactly the same as other races. They're just shorter. NASCAR didn't wait till Bubba Wallace got in the lead and threw a caution flag immediately. Go back and watch that NASCAR Classics. The, 40, the 23 was up front most of the day. He took the lead. He led to like the final seven or eight laps. There was a spin in turn four, caused a crash. Through the yellow flag, everybody decided, some people pitted, some people didn't. Before they could go back green, it started raining. It was on a Monday afternoon. It's already passed halfway. There was no chance of them restarting the race based on the weather, based on no lights at Talladega, based on how long it takes to drive a 2.66 mile track. Once they lost the track, there was no chance of it restarting. Bubba was declared the winner. 2022, they added 2311 added the second team with Kurt Busch. Bubba ran 36 races on that year. Or 35 races, excuse me. He had 24 or 20, 26 in the 23 car. Then he had nine in the 45. We know Kurt Busch won Kansas that year, the spring race. Kurt got hurt um, with the with the fact that 45 was in the playoffs. They moved Ty Gibbs over to the 23, moved Bubba in the 45 for the playoff run. The fall Kansas race, the 45 won. Bubba's second career win. Second place, and Denny over three seconds behind. There's a lot of people that like to, well, that was Kurt Busch's car. Kurt Busch is set up. Here's the thing, folks. When you make those statements, that was Kurt Busch's car, Kurt, Kurt Busch is set up. Of course, Bubba won. First off, you could have put any driver in that car. Doesn't mean they're going to win. Doesn't mean they're not going to speed down pit road. Doesn't mean the team is going to have an issue on pit road. It doesn't mean they're going to miss a crash. It takes actual ability to do those things. And if you're dead set, it only reason you won because it's Kurt Busch's setup and Kurt Busch's car. You're not putting down Bubba Wallace by saying that. You're putting down 2311. You're telling tw telling us that 2311 can only compare only prepare one car to win. Because somebody had to drive that car. And if you put Bubba Wallace in a winning car and he wins, it's not the driver. It's the team at that point not preparing his car properly. I don't believe that for one second. So in that 2022 season, we know he only raced 35 or 36 races because at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, he got ran up the track, bounced off the wall, hung a left. We all know the outcome of that. One race suspension. Uh, John Hunter Nemechek filled in for him. So in 35 starts that year, one win, five top fives, ten top tens, one pole, average finish, or finishing points 19th. 2023 so far has been his best metric year. 36 starts. Yeah, he tied top five top fives, tied with ten top tens, had the pole, finished fifth in point or tenth in points. Um, made it to the round of the 12. Both 2311 cars made it to the round of 8 and the round of the 12, respectively. Denny, uh, Denny Hamlin said on the Netflix special that when he built 2311, he knew five years. It was going to take five years to build a championship caliber team. In year three, both cars made the playoffs. Tyler Wright got to the round of 8. Bubba got to the round of the 12. Both cars in the top 10 in points. So far in 2024, two, six races in, Bubba's got two top fives, two top tens. Now, so far this year, he has an average finish of 17.5. This time last year, he had an average finish of 22.0. At this time last year, he was 50 points out of the playoffs. Right now, he is... Right now, he's five points out of, out of the top 16, sitting 18 points. Yeah, 5th, 5th, 35th, 16th, 29th, and 15th. One year ago at Circuit of America, we know what happened. He finished 37th. Um, he had a crash and turned 20 with Kyle, Kyle Larson. He lost brakes. 
have the crash. We, we know his comments, he said. We know the unfortunate backlash of his comments, what people took, took the way he took it, but the fact that team bounced back to finish tipped in points. I'm not worried about this year. I'm confident they're going to make the playoffs again. I'm confident they're going to win races. Um, it is a good team. Bubba was a good driver. If you look at the season average finish, um, Tyler Reddick and Bubba Wallace are pretty darn close. Bubba actually has a small edge in the average finish department. Um, let's see if I got it here. Doesn't look like. Hang on one moment. Bubba Wallace has the average finish of 17.5 so far through six races. Tyler Reddick has an average finish of 17.667. So 17.0 for Bubba and 17.67 for Tyler Reddick. Um, Bubba Wallace has an average running position of 19.1. Tyler has an average running position of 15.4. So those two team cars are pretty darn close. In the overall power rankings that I've done, check out the top 10. Right now, Tyler is 14th, Bubba is 17th. And my power rankings are based on average running position and average finish. So, the first driver spotlight of one Bubba Wallace. Stay tuned to Robert Sports Show. As the year goes on, we'll have more driver spotlights. And we'll have the champion spotlights when the season ends. As always, thanks for watching Robert Sports Show. And don't just have a great day. Have a spooky day, Robert Sports Show. Your YouTube leaders for some content.